All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a, wait for it, a rainy San Diego. How I don't get to say that very often, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> and today I'm joined by Stacy Highland. How are you doing, Stacy? I'm doing awesome. And I'm being joined from a snowy Montreal today. <laughs> A snowy Montreal, yeah. Well, at least that's a little bit more common, right? The Montreal yes. being snowy, then San Diego being rainy, not so much. And actually, I was, I'm from Ireland originally. I was actually home in Ireland for a few days like, over the weekend. And it was actually raining heavier here in San Diego than it was in Dublin. <laughs> so oh, that doesn't happen funny. very often either. So um, Stacey's an internationally recognized business growth strategist, author, coach, and was named International Coach of the Year in 2016. And her box, her books, her books are Hidden Profits, More Clients and Cash. That was uh, published in spring of this year, I think, right? No, it's coming. It's actually, we changed it because it's going to a publisher. So it's in negotiations right now with publishers, New York oh, publishers. So, so yeah. That's, excellent. that's great news. So when do you think it'll be coming out? Pro well, you know, the, that's the, that mm -hmm. was the whole thing is I, I was going to publish it myself and, and friends and coaches and people in my mastermind are like, no, this is too good. You have to get a publisher. So I got an agent this year and you know, now it's in the process. So we'll see. That's, that's, that's fantastic. And Stacey has been on uh, CNN, Inc, MSN, Money, Fox, Business, Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial Magazine. And what we wanted to talk today about was about the subject of the book, Hidden Profits, More Clients and Cash. So first of all, Stacy, what prompted you to write this book in the first place? Well, you know what happened is I was working with Tony Robbins. I was vice president mm. of consulting for his business mastery program. And I was at one of the first business, it was actually the first business mastery event. And it was in the recession and people had paid $10,000 to be there. Right. And at that point, you know, at the recession, people were kind of freaking out, right? Yeah. And Tony had a conversation with one of the get the participants there that the guy said, oh, I, tr I tried everything and nothing worked. So Tony asked him if he was open for coaching and he said, yes. And the guy said, and Tony said, well, what did you try? And the guy listed off like two or three things he tried. And Tony said, okay, you just told me you tried everything and you've tried three things. Um, <laughs> he said, well, how many times did you try these things? And the guy said, well, you know, a few times. And, and Tony said, well, you told me you tried everything and you've tried two or three things, two or three times. And he said, well, I didn't have enough team. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough time. And so Tony asked him, he said, have you ever seen somebody that's come to the United States? And, you know, you're an immigrant. I'm an immigrant, mm -hmm. you know, that's come with less to this country and made more money than you. And the guy said, yeah, you read them all the time in Entrepreneur Magazine. And it's so motivating. He said, well, what was the difference between them and you in this situation? And the, the answer was resourcefulness. Mm. Right. That they they didn't have the money. They might not have even spoken English. They didn't have credit cards. They didn't have a network. And they built these companies. And he said, so it's all about resourcefulness. So that's that was like the ding 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 about the hidden profits for me. Because at this point, a lot of my clients that were already really successful, they had lost financing for their businesses. Mm -hmm. They lost clients. Things, you know, were just like phew, spiraling out of control. So I started to look at how can I be more resourceful as a coach for my clients and help them make more money without doing more advertising and doing more marketing. Right. So that's how the hidden profits were born was from that. And so the book, you know, the book's all written and ready to go. Um, the book is all of these strategies that you can do that, are quick and easy to implement. They're free or low cost, and they work in any size business. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that story and um, what you just said. You know about the recession, about the guy trying a couple of things because um, it really is all about resourcefulness. And I can even just speak from my own experience. Like I'm in the states 21, 22 years now, and it is true. It's like it doesn't matter what situation the country is in. Is if you are prepared to be resourceful. Maybe it means moving. Maybe it move, means switching industries. Maybe it moves going out. Maybe it means moving out of your comfort zone. But I think the the great point that you're making here is the fact is that 
it's not that the it's not that we can't do things. It's not like there aren't opportunities. It's that we choose not to do them. And I think that's the hardest part is when you're when you have to be honest with yourself that the situation you're in is because you're choosing not to do some things that may be uncomfortable, like moving, say moving across the country. I mean, I went to one stage. I started off in Silicon Valley. I was in Orange County. Next minute, I was on the East Coast in DC. You know, it's and but it means that you. It means that those opportunities there. It's really what you're prepared to do, right? Right. Definitely. Definitely. And so many people give up way too soon. Mm -hmm. And I think we're great at putting, you know, obstacles in front of ourselves. And I think the other thing is like thinking too far ahead in terms of, oh, but, you know, if I do leave here and move across the country, then like, oh, I'd lose my community and my friends would all be this. And we talk ourselves out of it rather than go, well, this would be a really great adventure. Yeah. For so what sure. is so so what are some of the strategies that you have in the book about? Because uh, I like the idea of hidden profits, right? You know, so basically you're saying out there, there's a lot of stuff that you just need to turn over the right rocks, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we're using the resources you already have in your business. You've already done the marketing to get the client in the door. You've already spent the money on the marketing. You've already done the the work of the whole sales process to get that client, and you don't want to lose the money that's that's mm -hmm. right there in front of you that you just can't see. So um, I'll, I'll give you two. Um, so the first one is the upsell. People might have heard of this one before. Certainly you've had this done to you, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the day, McDonald's used to say, do you want fries with that? Yeah. Right? And so instead of just getting a sandwich and a drink, now you have a sandwich, a drink, and French fries. And so they've increased their average sale. Now, most people have heard of this strategy, but they're not implementing it on a consistent basis. So what, what happened with one of my clients is that he was in a, in a business that he had employees that weren't doing what he wanted them to do. He had mm -hmm. big box competitors to deal with that had big box advertising, you know, doing TV, radio, newspaper, and online. And so we just implemented the upsell and he increased his sales 48% in one month. Wow. And just from asking one question. So what you do is you identify what are the top products that you have and create an upsell just for the top products. Don't start with like, oh, I need upsells for yeah. everything. Look at the most popular thing that you're doing. Create an upsell for that. And then also what, what you need to do is look at like, how can that upsell serve the client, right? So it's not just about like, you know, throwing something on there. It's about serving the client. And a good example of this is GoDaddy the domain registrar. Mm -hmm. If you go to GoDaddy and register a domain, they will offer you a website tonight. They will offer you an email. They will offer you privacy. They offer you all of these things, but they're all serving you with your goal of creating a website. Right. So I find it really important to make it serve the client. Yeah. And I think the thing, uh, I think the thing about upsells sometimes is that you know, so I think salespeople get a little bit nervous because they're, they've gotten the deal to the line and everything is good. And then they're sort of, yes, they want the extra revenue and the extra commission, but they're afraid maybe if they off, if they, you know, load in something at the last minute that it may derail the process. So they back off. Well, I think the answer is right behind you on the wall for <laughs> prosperity. Yeah. And so thinking that way is really a way of thinking of lack and what right. we want to do as a salesperson, as a business owner, is open up our mind of saying, like, let's have a prosper prosperity focus of, like, let's have more. Let's serve the client more. The client has the, the chance to say no to the extra yeah. offer. And, you know, if you've done your job as a good salesperson, they're not going to say no to the original offer because they want that right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they just now have opened a loop of like, oh, maybe I need this thing. They might not say yes today, but they might say yes later also. Yeah. No, th and that's a great point is, yeah, they may say no to it right now, but, but at least you've put it out there and they know that it's available, et cetera. And I think it's sometimes it's like, unfortunately, as you know, it's like psychologically, you know, every, every, every salesperson has the experience of a deal blowing up at the last moment of something coming out of left field. I mean, I remember one time accompanying a salesperson on a, on a call years ago where they were ready to, uh, they were literally just going in to get the signature on a something that was like a $1.5, $2 million deal, like been working on for ages. And they walked in to see the guy and he said, oh, so, uh, he said, oh, oh sorry, I got, I got let go this morning. <laughs> and so it happens. It's horrible, but it happens. But if you can't let fear rule you, can you? 
No, and if you're not getting no's, then you're not asking enough. Like, yeah, yeah, really, you're not. True. You need to be asking so that you get some no's or you're not doing your job and you're not getting as many yeses as you could get. Exactly. So what are some other, what's uh, another another hidden profit idea? Well, this, this one came, again, these are all from like problems mm. that I was seeing yeah. with clients. And this was a new client. He canceled his coaching session for the day. And he told me, well, I asked him why. And he said, well, I got a hundred thousand dollar sale. And I was like ready to do my happy dance. Cause I love to celebrate yeah. with my clients. And he's like, Whoa, no happy dance. And I was like, why a hundred thousand dollar sale is awesome. He said, because this client used to be my client and he's been going somewhere else for the last seven years. So my client had been losing like a hundred thousand dollars a year in sales mm -hmm. And didn't even know it. So that's where the come on back strategy came into play of like, let's look at your client base. Let's look at any clients that have fallen off the, the radar, fallen off the books, that they're not doing business with you anymore. Mm -hmm. Invite them to come back into your world. Now, one of my clients did this in my um, profit optimization system program. And she was selling weight loss in the month of December, which as you can imagine, who wants to buy weight loss in December, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly, we want to yeah. eat cookies and eggnog and go to parties. And she was in the program and she was an implementer. And she said, all right, I'm going to do this because I know January 2nd, everybody's going to come and want to do weight loss. But she said, I need money right now. Mm -hmm. She did this and increased her sales by 50% in two weeks by inviting people back in with a package. And so what I suggest is, Number one, you want to look at who are your perfect clients. That's another, you know, hidden profit is like choose yeah. those 20% that are accounting for 80% of your business and people that don't suck your energy. Bring those people back, not the ones that like suck your energy yeah. out and make them a special offer to come back with a time limit on it. And I'm telling you, it works magic in every business. So no matter how long people have been gone, you know, set mm -hmm. yourself a schedule that if they've been gone X number of months, you're going to reach out to them with an offer to come back because a lot of times people are shy to come back. So you need to reach out to them. Yeah, I think that's a really good, I think that's a really excellent point. Uh, again, uh, understanding the psychology of, of buyers. And, and the thing is, sometimes you just have to take a step back and put yourself in the shoes of buyers because we're all consumers, we're all buyers and think about ourselves. Um, if you've left somewhere, I mean, I've done it, you know, you, you, you were doing something and you don't do that anymore. Yeah, it is kind of a bit... Uh, it is a bit awkward to come back later. So I guess that's a really good point is you got to make it as easy and welcoming as possible. Almost forgive it. It's like, it's okay. You can come back. We don't yeah, especially for her. Cause her, like number yeah. one, it was December. Number yeah. two, it was weight loss. So nobody wants to admit they fell off the wagon. Right. So yeah, she yeah, had like, yeah. like a double like X yeah. against her to find people. <laughs> and you know, I've asked people that are in this situation a lot, like hairdressers. I've said like, you know, how do you feel when somebody leaves and then they want to come back? And they said, we love it. But the people yeah, yeah. that get their hair cut are too shy to go back because they, they went to somebody else one month. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you just want to like, go have a conversation, you know, sales is a conversation. So, you know, pick up the phone and say, Hey, Susan, I'm excited. You know, we haven't talked for a while. How's the blah, blah, blah. And now with social media, it's very easy to find the blah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. How's your son's soccer going? How's your, you know, you know, anniversary trip, you know, it's really easy to, to find something to connect on and then offer the new come on back, you know, offer. The yeah. and, I, and I think the other part is that we tend to, you know, we tend to you know, uh, kind of face forward, don't we, especially in business, and we tend to be focused on the next thing, next thing. So the people who leave us and that we kind of, you know, they're, they're far distant in the rear view mirror and we don't really glance back that often. So it's a good discipline to actually go back and realize that, yeah, they may have left and maybe they may have had a really good reason. They may have had a, not a good reason at all. It doesn't really matter why they left, but if you keep reaching out, hopefully at some stage, it might be the right time for them to come back. And what I find with this, with the come on back strategy is that the clients are faster right? So when you reach mm -hmm. out to them, it's not a long sales process. So if your sales process is usually, you know, 30 days, 60 days, you know, six months or a year, this is a much faster process. Chances are, if it's a big deal, you've already been put in their accounting system. So uh -huh. you're an approved buyer or vendor for them. So that speeds it up. You already have that like, know, and trust factor with the person. So it's not like you have to go back to square one. It's very quick and easy. And like December for me is one of the best times of the month to reactivate people. 
Mm. And so, you know, set yourself a few times a year that you're like, okay, I'm going to call X number of people a month, or I'm going to do this once a quarter, but make this a regular part of your business because it's really, it's really costing you a lot of money. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. I think those are those are great strategies, uh, Stacey. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you. Sure. Well, I help entrepreneurs scale without the hustle. So, you know, I really believe, and when I saw your motto of like purveyor of prosperity, it fits yeah. so much because I truly believe that people can build a prosperous, profitable business without hustling and killing themselves. And this Mm -hmm. came about because my dad died when he was 56. And he didn't do any of the things that he wanted to do. He died with a lot of regrets. So I said, you know what? I'm going to build a business, but I'm going to build a regret-free business. I can be Mm -hmm. here for my kids when they get home from school. I can go to their activities and take lots of vacations with them. So that's what I help business owners do. I have helped clients go from zero to six figures, six to eight figures, six to seven figures. Um, using these strategies to work smarter instead of harder. And you can find me at stacyhyland.com to find out more. Yeah, and you'll see all of the uh, contact information in, in um, Stacy's bio on SalesPop. But I think that's fantastic. And I do think, I think it's part of it is that, as you kind of mentioned earlier, is that you have to get into a prosperity or abundance mindset and realize that, you know, there is enough out there for everybody if you put your mind to it and you work hard enough to get your piece. But as you say, like work, work smart and, and, and do the right thing. So I look forward to your book and uh, hopefully you will get good news from your agent soon and we'll, we'll see it published in the not too distant future. Yeah, I'll let you know when it comes out. Great. And maybe Thanks you come so much, back and Don. talk. This was fantastic. Yeah, maybe you come back and talk to us more when the book is uh, published. All right, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Uh, hopefully you'll join us for another Expert Insight interview very soon. Thanks again, Stacey, and hope you stay warm from the snow because, you see, I know the, the rain's going to go away here. The sun's going to come back out pretty soon. But... <laughs> You're one of those mean Californians now. <laughs> yeah, I am, but I just love, to, I just love to, to wind people up about the weather because you get no sympathy from anybody in the world when you complain about weather in San Diego. No. No, you don't. (laughs) That's okay, though. All right. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you. Bye-bye.